Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something for you on the bench. So we're going to be taking a look at Whoop motors. So we're talking about a 0702 26,000 kV motor. I have them right here in this box. And these are going to be unique motors. Um, this is the first time I've ever got to see them in person. We're going to look at these under the microscope, kind of describe something about them. Um, I have a little bit of history with slip shaft motors and that type of thing. So we're going to get into that information as well. So stay tuned. All right, before we get to unpacking these motors, I just want to kind of go through a little bit of history. Um, it was a little more than, it's almost two years now. It was right after the museum race, um, 2023. Um, I, I had discovered the issue that I was dealing with was slip shaft motors. So this is, this is something that has plagued me, uh, quite a bit. I'm like a pro crasher. Like there's a lot of people that are fast out there, but I, I'm really good at crashing. So I had a lot of slip shaft issues. Um, so I had a conversation with a couple of people and one of those people happened to be Jesse, uh, uh Perkins of tinyhoop.com. And that was in July of last year. I had sent some, some drawings and, and had talked to him about that. And he has come out with a motor that I think is quite unique in the fact that it, doesn't utilize the normal shaft and bell scenario for whoop motors. Um, so let me show you this video here. So this is your flying is terrible. It's really you though. Okay. So this video I made, uh, it's just about to hit two year mark. That video explains like the whole scenario about slip shafts and, you know, the propeller, like all these different things that might cause your whoop to, to act really crazy or or real um slow or whatever so what happens is when a shaft uh slips so the shaft will not spin as fast as the bell okay because the bell's being spun by the motor and then the shaft um has the propeller attached to it it's not wanting to go as fast so you don't have that snap reaction so you'll you'll notice that when you punch your throttle the quad will either just kind of wobble a little bit and it just doesn't want to do it because the flight controller accelerometer is saying, I want to be, you know, my command line from my pilot is saying, I want a, a level acceleration. And if this one front motor has a slip shaft, or in my case, I had two slip shafts trying to race the museum 2023, uh, the whole quad just slows down and it just won't go. And if they're slipped bad enough, it'll actually land on the floor and act like a dead battery. It's the most bizarre thing. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what the slip shaft scenario does. And if you watch that video, um, your flying is terrible. It, I go through the whole thing. So I don't want to rehash all that in this video. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over the bench and open these up. And we're going to take a look at them under a microscopic camera and, and really look at, well, you know, what did they do? So let's go ahead and peel these dudes open. I've already taken my packing label off and, and cut my, uh, cut my line here. So quite a, quite a bit of stickers. <laughs> He has sent these to me. I tell you what, at first I'm like, there, there ain't no motors in here. I'm I'm used to a square little box. So they come in a little, I don't know, what do you call it, a medicine bottle? So 0702, uh, 26,000 kV. So you get some motor screws, like just your standard motor screws for whoop frames I guess they're just loose in here that's kind of snazzy let's uh this this camera is just not going to do it I can tell you that so let's go ahead and jump over to the micro camera all right so over here at the micro camera you can see this is quite a different uh scenario than this is the first time I've got to look at these other than on paper and you can see there's quite a bit of space between that shaft and that bell. So 
here's here's the whole idea or the premise behind having a, a different design for this shaft. Because I tell you what, there's nothing worse than, than having, you know, a, a dozen motors and half of them slip shaft on you. So this bell is adhered to this shaft. And normally what we have is a one and a half millimeter circle inside of a circle with just enough space for some glue. And if the motor heats up too much or you smash into something... Or in sometimes my cases they were slip shaft from from the get go. Uh, it's very frustrating. So this design hopefully will will remedy that and no more slip shafts because there's nothing worse than crashing at a race and then losing your you know losing your next race because your your motor shaft is slipping and you didn't realize it because it's not really something easy to see. But you could see that this is like. I mean, this, I wouldn't say double the circumference, but there's a lot more, there's a lot more real estate to glue to. So that's quite interesting. So if you have any questions about this in comments, let me know. Um, you know, I'm kind of noticing these, these motor windings are actually quite, quite robust. There's, it doesn't seem like it has as many windings either. You know, it'd be real interesting to see what the uh, see what the rating and efficiency of these are. Let's jump back over to the bench. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a unique. So it's kind of got like that like that little uh, copper and silver going on. So kind of a snazzy little motor. Um, you know, I'm thinking about it. Um, Jesse sent these to me so I could check them out in person. And I'll be honest with you, I don't I don't think I'm really not that fast. I'm going to I'm going to give these to FPV Gaps. He he would put these through their paces. I tell you what, that's what I'm going to do. Uh I'm going to give these to FPV Gaps uh Gaps training ground and I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let him terror, terrorize these things, and then I hope that he would agree that when if, if and when one of them fail, I could get the whole set back, so I could take them apart and look at the bushings and see what kind of wear and stuff is on them. But uh, I'm pretty interested to know what kind of what kind of efficiency. Um, I may do a KV run on them, like right now while they're open. I could uh, do a KV run. You're familiar with that, right? I have a video on my channel. Uh, let's take a look here. Just see, so just so you know, um, so you can you can measure the KV of the motors uh, before you put them on your quad, so you'll know whether or not you got you know right here. So how can you tell if a brushless motor is bad or good? Uh, calculate the KV of the brushless. So this is the video that you'd want to use, so you can calculate your KV and make sure that your motor is good to go before you you know go try to compete with it. Yeah, I tell you what, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm gonna check that before I give them to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these to him. And I don't know how long it'll take before one of them fail, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. So, yeah. So let me know in comments what kind of questions you might have, because I'll want to do like a follow-up video on them. Um, I'm really interested. This is, this is something that's, that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm expecting to see some good results out of it. And, uh, and thanks Jesse for sending these to me so I can like, you know, tangibly, uh, check them out. So, yeah. So I'll go ahead and put a link in my description for FPV Gap's, uh, YouTube channel. So he will probably most likely place a video in there, uh, ripping these. Um, and then I'll come back and give you some, uh, some of my opinions. So let me know in comments if you have any questions and I'll be back for a follow-up video. So, hey, if this uh, video entertained you at all, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you hated it. Man, you give me a thumbs down, it all works. Enjoy the breeze.